Hello, Rachel. Hi. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? I'm great. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. It's great to have you. Thanks so much. I hope you're not nervous. No, I'm not. Oh, that's I'm great. I'm good. I'm looking forward to this conversation. Yeah. Can you please tell me a little bit about yourself? Who are you? I'm Rachel Tempo, and I'm from Lusaka, Zambia. I work as the Senior Health Education Officer and the local municipality, which is Lusaka City Council. Lusaka City Council. Yes. What's important for Rachel? What's important for you? For me, what's important is um, life, which is the decisions I make about life and how I navigate through life. What do you include in that life, in those decisions? In those decisions is um, having what's important and priorities, setting my priorities right and uh, making sure I have the basic necessities that I need to move with life. What do those basic necessities include? Good health and uh, having shelter and food. Health, shelter and food. Yeah. Indeed, basic necessities. What do you do at the municipality? Uh, as I earlier mentioned, I work as a senior health education officer. So this entails um, developing and uh, implementation of um, information, education uh, and communication materials for the public and also to review policies on various public health issues and uh, to implement water and sanitation issues in terms of san um, advocacy. That's what I do. You spoke of life choices, yes. being able to make those life choices. Is that a choice you made? That's a choice that I made. To work in health? Yes. Why? How did that choice come to be? Okay, when I was 13 years old, I... I noticed um, the signs of menstruation. That's the first time I noticed the signs of menstruation. So I was confused and scared because I didn't know who I could tell about what was uh, what I was uh, what was going through me. Yeah. So, but then uh, before then, I had a conversation with my friends. Um, they were discussing in short about how. Um, they had started their periods, but for me, I didn't understand because it had not occurred to me. So, but then I was just listening in and uh, I asked her, like, how do you manage? How long does it take? And so they were like, oh, it takes about two to three days. And uh, so once that happens, we use this, this type of fabric. So this is how you use it. They even like demonstrated on how to use it. But then I didn't really pay much attention because it wasn't happening to me. So, but then months later now, and uh, it started. And I was like, should I go back to my friends? Should I tell my mom? What should I do? So the challenge, why I had so many questions is because of the culture in the area that I live in, where um, there are a lot of cases in terms of early pregnancies, early marriages. So when that happened to me, I thought um, maybe I would, be, I would be an embarrassment to my family to say, okay, now this has happened. So if I tell my mom, like, that's it, she's pregnant. <laughs> yeah, so I was so scared, to be honest. And um, so, but then, so I managed to navigate through the first month when it happened because of my friend's advice uh, before. And the second month, so in the third month, it was one morning when I was busy doing my chores and I didn't actually notice that I had started, so my skirt was uh, stained. Then my mom noticed and uh, of course she didn't say anything. She just, yeah, she just noticed, I was like, oh, okay, this has happened to her. So I guess she went to tell the friend because how I got to know is the friend came to talk to me. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, okay, maybe I'm sure my mom has noticed that this has happened to me. So that's how she told the friend that, okay, maybe you help my child 
uh, she started her period, she needs to know the do's and don'ts and things like that. So the friend came, I remember it was around uh, 5.30, 6 p.m. She was like, oh, it's caught me, I'm going to get some things at the market and one or two things. I was like, oh, okay, we can go. So whilst we were walking, she was like, oh, no, I've noticed your breasts are now coming up, and uh, which is a very good thing. And I'm sure you start noticing even the um, other things such as uh, menstruation. So, and uh, that entails that you really need to take care of yourself. You need, uh, in terms of hygiene, you need to bath at least twice a day. And also, you need to avoid men. But then, because I didn't really know her very well, for me to express myself, to ask questions like, like what does it mean to say avoid men? So, that's how I just, I was like, oh, okay. I was just listening in and... She was like, okay, avoid. And then I have these fabrics that you can use. When that happens, ensure that you, you wear and, um, and things like that. So anyway, we walked and came back home. And uh, still my mom didn't talk to me. And I didn't also tell about what we discussed with her friend. Yeah, so, and yeah, that went on until when I was in grade nine, when, um, uh, there was a local NGO which came to our school to talk about sexual health and I think that was a turning point for me. I was like, this is happening to me, but I still have questions about the biological processes. What are the consequences if this doesn't happen to me? So I had to ask all those questions during the session that uh, we had with the local NGO. But then I kept on thinking that if that NGO didn't come on that day or maybe I wasn't in school meaning that I wouldn't have had access to information about menstrual hygiene and um, anyway that went on until I completed school so but still you know if it's something that has um, really impacted you whilst you're young or it has affected you it you get to um, keep thinking about it even as you grow like it's something that you would want to find answers. Yeah, so that's how I completed um, my grade 12. And I was asked, okay, what do you want to do? I was like, anything that has to do with health, hygiene, and things like that. So my, my family was like, oh, okay, you're going, um, there are these courses, and at least this is something that we're able to afford. So I was like, oh, okay, I'll just go with, community health and development so that's how I went on to do the course and I've found myself in a space where I'm able to share this information with the 13 year old young ones who may not have access to the information that I did have and also the other issue is um, the facilities as well because that was, I think we didn't even have those facilities in terms of dispose of this uh, fabric. How do I dispose it off? That is the information that is um, not really coming out or in terms of the disposal, the fa I mean disposal facilities, as well as access to information. How do I take care of myself? What does it mean to say avoid, um, avoid men? And yeah, so that's how I found myself in this space and uh, going ahead to provide the information as well as the facilities. Facilities. Yes, because this is very critical for a girl child who is uh, very much vulnerable, especially that if they don't have the information. And today uh, you work to provide those facilities. Yes, today I work to, to girls go, to who girls. may not have access to. Yes. Girls who may not have access to the facilities, be it in school, in public areas, mm, yes. but also in families, in homes, because that's important to you, to what you did not have. Yeah. You also spend a lot of time talking about sharing information. You wish your mother would have talked to you. Yes, I wish my mother would have talked to me too, because she knows me better than her friend. And... Uh, she knows uh, maybe what I like, what I don't like, how I'll react to certain situations. And I feel if she um, told me, 
or even before that okay this is what is going to happen or i've seen that this has happened to you this is how you should do it i feel i would be more open even to ask her questions or even to be more open to even discuss um these other things that may affect me or maybe to say oh i have a boyfriend you know so i think if she if she opened up when once she realized that that that's what is happening to this girl child i think it would have i would have even learned more about menstruation and even just a lot of things about life yeah how did you feel with the other woman with the friend of your mother mm -hmm. having that conversation with you were you embarrassed were you ashamed or did you wonder if your mother was ashamed what was going through your head? i was feeling embarrassed and uncomfortable because uh, this is someone that I don't really know very much. And uh, you know, where this thing where you tell someone and then maybe you hear your peers are laughing at you, maybe she'll go and tell her kids, says, oh, this is what's happening to, to Rachel. So I was scared because I didn't know how she would um, take the information that I give to her because maybe tomorrow I might be the laughing stock of the community. So I was uncomfortable, yeah. And if, like you said, this NGO had not come. Yeah. And it took a, a whole year after this mm -hmm. event for this NGO to come. So you spend this year in confusion. Yeah. You have some information at that point, mm -hmm. but you still have never spoken to your mother about this. <sighs> yes. Because, uh, because I think it's, menstruation is something which is uh, considered as a taboo and uh, there's a lot of stigma around it and even me i think I, uh, I i was feeling uncomfortable and also i may be feeling embarrassed and also like i earlier mentioned i didn't have information so i thought if i open it up maybe i may be pregnant you know and then like how will i tell my mother that okay this is what i'm like that's it you're pregnant so you don't yeah, even know so the biology of getting pregnant at that point or I no I didn't know I then I didn't know yeah today you're in the position to do what this NGO does for you yeah at the city level yes how do you live that experience how does it feel to be at this 360 level where you are doing what was not done for you or was done for you a bit later than when you needed it um I feel good though i think i can do more i still feel there there's still a lot of uh, taboos around menstruation that really needs to be tackled and um, yeah i'm doing my best but i think i can do much more to help young ones so that they have the information they have the access to this information as well as the facilities that can help them yeah do you feel between information, engaging with community and infrastructure, mm -hmm. the municipalities where your skills can best have greater impact? Yes, can have greater impact because uh, we the facilities, I think it's everything. It makes your life easier. Once you have the information, you, you're able to make informed decision. Remember in the introduction, I talked about making decisions. So I think when you have the facilities, you have the information, it's you now to decide on how you're going to use that information. So yeah. All of the things you need to make informed decision and to yeah. live a full life. Mm -hmm. My last question to you, Rachel, is what are you in service of? Inspiring change. Thank you. Thank you.